A lot of us will, you know, we'll go for this and then all of a sudden we mess up and we're like, dang, it's over. And we go back to what we were doing. I'm going to challenge you when you walk out of here today. I'm not saying, you know, I'm not saying this grace message where it's just okay to keep messing up and you just go on and you do. It's important that you change. Repentance means to do a 180. You go in one direction, you turn around and you walk exactly the opposite direction. Okay, that's what repentance is. Repentance isn't a daily ritual that we do to get the weight of like, I mess up every day off my shoulders. But when you mess up, it's not a ticket to give up. When you mess up, when you're squeezed, what's inside of you will come out. What you're filling yourself with will come out. You take a sponge, you fill it with red water, you take it over here, you squeeze it, and red water will come out of that sponge. What you're filling yourself with daily, when you're squeezed, will come out of you. If you can learn to fill yourself with the goodness of God, intimacy with God, the promises that are in the Bible... There's a thousands of them. Promises that are in the Bible and they're all for you and they're all good and they're all God. If you can learn to fill yourself with that, then when you get squeezed, that stuff will start to come out. And when you mess up, maybe you don't, but when you, if you do mess up, then when you get squeezed, you'll know exactly how to take care of it and you'll take care of it quick and you'll just keep running. We've got to learn how to get over our little things and just start to run and forget that we ever used to fall in that hole every time we came around the track. We've got to start pursuing purity on a level that the kids on our campuses, the students on our campuses, their lives are completely rocked to the foundation of who they are when they see us. Because we carry something that their life is so hungry for. When I was in my shell bleeding, I was so hungry for joy. When I was in my shell bleeding, I was so hungry for freedom. I was so hungry to have a life that looked like some of the Christian people that I knew. And I thought it was impossible. And it was the goodness of God that brought me to a place where I believed that there was some redemptive value in my life. God's heart is out on those streets. God's heart is on your campus. You don't have to pray God into your campus. God's there waiting for you to stand up and believe that you who you are. Yeah. God's heart is in your workplace. God's heart is compassionate about your school, about your family, about your parents' relationships. He's passionate about you. And he's waiting for you to just connect with intimacy. Jesus said, I only do what I see my father doing because Jesus had an intimate connection with the father. And Jesus could walk in power and see the dead raised, see the blind have sight, the, the deaf would hear, the mute would speak. Jesus walked in an extreme power and he's offered that to you. He said, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It means it's right in front of you waiting for you to hold on to it. Waiting for you to reach out and grab it as real as I just grabbed his hand. The kingdom of heaven is at hand for you. It's right in front of you. When we start to take personal responsibility, we're going to see campuses saved in a day. When we start to take personal responsibility for what our eyes lay on, we're going to start to see our campuses change. And you say, but it's so hard at my school. Then do something about it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Everybody's into, I was just a youth pastor on the coast for the last five and a half years or five years or whatever. And uh, the coast of California is known for its marijuana. And in the school, probably 70, am I, am I right, 70% of the students smoke weed? Yeah. Maybe more, huh? 80% of the students smoke weed. You can actually go into some places in town and they use it as currency to buy things. <laughs> they'll go around the back of the store and they'll hand them, you know, a certain amount of weed and they'll go, you know, like... But 80% of the people at my school smoke weed. What are you doing about it? What are you carrying on your life that's going to break the chains off the back of that person's head and that snake is going to be powerless over your campus? Because that snake is just stabbing people in the back of the head and that snake's looking for you. He is. He would much rather have one of you than ten of the others that don't believe. He wants to see your eyes fall on something that he can go, gotcha, snap, and put a chain in the back of your head. He wants to see you start to believe the lie that you're powerless so he can go snap and he's got you in his hand. And he's going around and he's trying to take a whole generation and he doesn't feel challenged. But he doesn't realize that God's raising up an army right now that's been handed coals 
fire from heaven that they're called to walk in that's going to begin to cut the arms off that thing and cut the chains out of his hand and start to snap the chains off the back of people's head. That they would come free and they would grab a hold of this coal and start to run with it. There's a generation with fire in their eyes and I'm looking at them right now. There's a whole generation that God's placed fire on their eyes from birth and he's waiting for them to walk in it. And it's you right here sitting in this room. What time is it? I just get passionate about this. There's something that just burns inside my stomach. It's like it's inside me and I feel like I can't get it out fully. I'm so passionate about this and I know that God's more passionate than I'll ever be about it. He's passionate to see this army rise up. This bold army. And you say, oh, I'm shy. <laughs> do you know what God can do with shy people? It's scary. Yeah. I had some in my youth group that were shy. And God gets all of them and they turn into these pit bulls. Like a pit bull locks on to something they won't let go. I had people in my youth group, they just lock on to other students on their campus and they're like, I'm not letting you go until your arm comes with me or you come with me. <laughs> Standing up on benches, prophesying over people, calling out words of knowledge, and students are getting healed during lunch because they're screaming out words of knowledge on the bench. We're getting testimonies from all over this nation of young people just like you that are going out in their community and seeing revival just start to spark in Walmart and all these different stores because they chose to walk in intimacy with God and believe Him for who He is and know that God's powerful, I'm His kid, and He calls me powerful, so I'm powerful, I'm going to walk in power. It's a daily thing. There are people getting healed every day. There are people that aren't here in this conference that are in their hometown right now. Someone's getting healed in a store. Someone's getting healed in a city. Someone's getting healed somewhere. Someone's getting saved somewhere because someone chose to believe the fact that they're called in this generation to carry fire. This world's waiting for you. Six billion people are waiting for you. 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. What? How many students you have on your campus? 200, 100? They're all waiting for you. Whether they say it or not, whether they're smiling or frowning, they're waiting for you and they're waiting for what's inside of you. I was waiting for somebody. I was waiting for anybody. I was a tough guy and inside I was so weak and I was just waiting for somebody to tell me that I had any kind of redemptive value. That I had any kind of gift on my life. That anybody actually loved me. And it only... All, it, it, it didn't take much from God. It just took the fact that He showed me that He was there for a few of the events that happened in my life and I was ready to change. And then someone invites me to church and that was it. It was done right there. There was no argument. I was just waiting for anything. There's a whole world that's just waiting for anything. And we get so scared thinking that, oh, what if they turn me down? Well, then that should just drive you to be more intimate with God. So the next time you go out on the streets, you carry a fire in your eyes that cannot be denied. People look at you and they start to cry. Charles Finney carried a fire. He would, he would go into factories. He went into a factory to check it out one time. Two or three hundred workers at the factory. He walked in just to look at it. And the whole factory falls on their face and starts repenting for everything they'd ever done. Because the goodness of God stepped in that place with them. He carried this anointing for, to, to just see people be convicted and repent. Smith Wigglesworth got on a train and a man walked up to him and shook his hand. He said, Sir, you convict me of my sin. He fell on his face and started repenting from him. Oh, I'm telling you, there's a level of power that's offered right now today that we have not tapped into yet. For that, for out there. We started to see it in here. We started to see, I mean, we just saw the first night how many people, 100 people got healed with no prayer asthma and knees and ankles and backs and braces and everything else. No prayer. And God's waiting for somebody to believe the same way we believe in here out there when they're in the streets. He's waiting for somebody that can push through rejection when they ask to pray for someone. He's waiting for somebody that they pray and nothing happens and they go, come on, who else can we pray for? Somebody that's not going to give up. Someone that their eyes fall upon something impure and they say, God, that was not right. And they repent immediately and they start running again with fire. And they don't disconnect and go, oh, I have to put distance between me and God for a good week because I, I'm a bad person. And he's like, I love you. Come on, let's run. Let's not slow down. He's looking for somebody to cut the arms off that snake. He's looking for somebody to grab their students at their school and start to rip chains out of the back of their necks. God's looking for someone to break the chains off this generation. He, he wants all of you, but he'll take whoever will do it.